Okay, so in this video, we want to understand the quadratic formula. And let's see if we can do it in about 10 minutes or so. Now, um, just some uh, kind of context about this formula and, and the subject uh, that it relates to. Um, basically, we're going to be studying the quadratic formula in Algebra 1. You may see a little bit in pre-algebra, but it is an absolutely critical um, formula for you to know, okay? So let's just give you some background real quick on uh, why you need to know it, and then um, we'll get into the actual formula here. So just real quick, there's the actual formula. So if that looks familiar to you and you want to know how to, you know, basically apply it, just uh, be patient and we'll get there in one second. All right, now what we have here is an example problem that we're going to do. Now, this is a polynomial equation, okay? It's a polynomial equation. Very specifically, a polynomial, I'm just going to abbreviate. Now, you study this in algebra, but polynomials specifically have a special uh, characteristics about them, okay? If you look at this polynomial, its, it's highest power is 2. It's a second-degree polynomial. So by definition, when you have a second degree polynomial, it's what we we uh, refer to as quadratic. Now, what's um, important about that? Well, this formula here only applies to quadratic equations. So we're trying to solve this quadratic equation, and there's various ways that we can um, uh, approach it. Okay, so the first way that you would want to try to approach this particular problem is to solve it by factoring, okay? It's always the easiest way to do that. And a matter of fact, this particular polynomial equation can be factored. In other words, you can fact, factor this trinomial, okay? You set it equal to zero, um, just like this, and then you would go ahead and set each of these factors equal to zero, and then you would solve. So I don't wanna, I'm not gonna get into this uh, too much more in this particular video because this video is about the quadratic formula, but I'm just telling you in general, when you have a polynomial equation, you always really want to try to um, use a factoring technique to solve it. Now, there are polynomials that cannot be factored, and that is where the quadratic formula comes into play, okay? Because a, a theory about polynomials is the following, okay? This second degree polynomial or a polynomial to the highest power of uh, 2, okay? There's a theory that says the following. Whatever your highest power is of a polynomial equation, that's how many solutions you have. So this little guy here, this being the highest power of this equation, means, and it's x squared, so I'm looking at that little 2, the, two there, that means that this equation has two solutions. It has two solutions. Now, oftentimes, the solutions, the name for solutions, sometimes we, uh, we uh, refer to the, those as zeros and sometimes roots, okay? So they're kind of eh, semi-interchangeable terms, a root, a zero, a solution. But basically, they're going to be the solutions to an equation when you have the poly a polynomial set equal to zero, okay? So you need to really kind of strengthen your understanding of polynomials in general and, you know, basically what they mean and what, what uh, the kind of um, characteristics about them in order to really successfully apply the quadratic formula. Just don't want to be throwing any polynomial into the quadratic formula because, you know, it's a, it's not, it's a special needs tool, let's just say, okay? We use it when we need to use it. All right, so here we have a uh, polynomial equation, quadratic equation, a, a degree two polynomial, and a, for, uh, the way we're going to go ahead and approach this problem using a quadratic formula is first, we want to write this in what we call standard form. And that means it's the, from the highest power to the lowest power, and that's generally a number. So here you can see that this is already is written in that form. We have x to the second, and then we have an x term, and then we have a number, and it's always going to be set equal to zero. So if your polynomial is not written in this particular form, you need to kind of shuffle things around such that it's in this form. This form is called its standard form, highest power to lowest power, okay? So it's going to be the degree two, degree one, number equals to zero. Okay, now once you have that, and then we can go ahead and actually start plugging some values in. Now, 
let's go ahead and uh, look at some coefficients of this polynomial. So x squared is actually technically a 1 there. This is 1x squared minus 2x minus 15. So this guy we're going to give a specific, uh, assign a specific variable to. And this guy here, and this one over here, okay? So the number in front of the x squared in the equation is a, okay? So this is a is equal to 1, all right? This, uh, the number in front of the x term is b. So b is equal to negative 2. And then the number itself is C. So C is equal to negative 15. And you make sure you get those signs in there as well, whether they're positive or negative. So a general form to use a quadratic formula is AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to 0. So if you have a polynomial equation in its general form, the number in front of the X is A. The number in front of the, I'm sorry, the number in front of the X squared is A. The number in front of the x is b, and then the number out here by itself is c. Okay, so you can see that in this particular example. Okay, so now that we have our values for these variables, a, b, and c, we simply plug them into the quadratic formula, and we're going to go ahead and find our two solutions. Now, a lot of you out there probably already understand this part. As a math teacher of, you know, decades, I've seen thousands, tens of thousands of problems, students, you know, doing the quadratic formula, and you pick up on common mistakes, common trends. So I'm going to really try to point them out to you uh, so you don't make these common errors. So let's go ahead and continue on with this problem, and, and I'll point out the, um, uh, these common, you know, um, trends here in a second. All right, so when we plug things in to the quadratic formula, we've got to be super careful. So this is like the first place where students... Um, make a mistake. They understand the A, B, C part, but they plug things in not uh, correctly into the formula. But let's go ahead and do it now. So we have X is equal to minus B. So B is negative 2. Here, I'll go ahead and put little boxes around them. Okay. A is equal to 1. B is equal to negative 2. And C is equal to negative 15. And uh, specifically where students mess up is when you have negative signs with these values, they, they get confused here. So the best thing to do is to use parentheses. So x is equal to minus b. So just put the minus sign there. And b is equal to negative 2. So you need to put parentheses negative 2. Your b value is negative 2. So plug that in. So anytime you're replacing this variable with the value, use parentheses. And that's just... Uh, a good general um, rule to follow in algebra, okay, when you evaluate expressions. So we have minus b, okay, so that's going to be minus or minus 2, plus or minus, and I'll get into what the plus or minus means um, as we work through this problem. The square root of b squared, again, it's going to be minus 2, that's b squared, minus 4 times a, a here is 1, right? I'm just following the formula, and c is negative 15. So I'm using parentheses to plug in these values. And notice my square root um, goes all the way over the b squared minus 4ac part. And this is all going to be divided, one big long fraction bar, by 2a. So that's going to be 2 times the value of a, when, and that is 1 in this case. All right, once you've done this, you want to double check your work, okay? A lot of students, they'll plug in the wrong values and then they'll do that part correctly. They'll do it as, as if they plugged in, like they're doing another problem, they did it perfectly. The only problem is they plugged in the wrong value. So don't start simplifying the math here until you double check, okay? So in other words, just kind of quickly look, okay, is that B, B squared? Just double check that you plugged everything in correctly. If you've, you know, uh, once you've done that and you feel good about it, now we're going to go ahead and do the math here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just going to grab this and kind of scoot this into the center so we can work a little bit better. All right, now this is basically now an order of, an oper order of operations problem. You need to go nice and slow, step by step, and you should be writing the steps down. Don't try to calculate all of this in one step. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you. And so you're going to just kind of rewrite this. X equals minus, minus 2 is what? That's positive 2, right? The opposite of negative 2 is 2. 
So that's going to be 2 plus or minus. And let me just stop here. If you didn't understand this, that means you need to go back and work on your positive negative number rules, real number uh, rules. Okay. So again, you know, uh, as I'm doing this, if you don't understand something, you're probably having trouble with the quadratic formula, not because of the formula itself. It's because you need to review your, you know, positive negative number rules or fractions or, or whatnot. Okay, so let's continue on. So negative of negative 2 is positive 2 plus or minus the square root. And just kind of work this down one at a time, okay? So negative 2 parentheses squared means this. That's a negative 2. Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2. So that is going to be equal to a positive 4. All right, so I'm going to write that right here. Minus 4 times 1, okay, times a negative 15. So I'm just kind of writing this out like this, okay? I haven't done any more steps here. All over 2 times 1, and that's 2. So I'm just kind of simplifying one or two steps at most per per line that I'm writing, okay? Now, let's continue to move forward. So x equals 2. I'm just rewriting this again, okay? There's nothing here I can do yet, but I have to rewrite it. 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. Now, what I'm going to focus on is this part right here. And this is another very common place where students mess up. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little, um, yeah, little technique, a little tip here on how to avoid this. Students will they'll they'll confuse the signs. They'll get this wrong. Okay, again, many many uh, students who do get these problems wrong get them wrong. You know, they make them an error right here. So four minus uh, it's going to be four minus four ac or four times one times negative fifteen. This minus sign. Do yourself a favor, turn it into a plus negative, because this is really a negative 4, a plus negative 4. So b squared minus 4ac, That's this is the part in our formula. It really means, or you can think of it as b squared plus a negative 4 times a times c. Okay? And students invariably, uh, you know, they get, a, they get this problem wrong, they more than 50% of the time, they make an error right here. Okay, so what I'd always suggest to students, if you're making that mistake, if you get confused, just turn this into a plus negative 4. So now we have plus negative 4 times 1 times negative 15. And just really kind of focus on what's going on here. So now I have 4 plus, let me kind of back up here, and we have to figure out what negative 4 times 1 times negative 15 is. So this is going to be a negative times a positive, which is a negative. So our negative times a negative. This whole thing is going to be positive here. And it's going to be a positive 60. Okay? Now that's going to be all over 2. Okay? Which was uh, 2 times 1. So it's just 2. So now we're kind of getting getting there. And things are kind of, we're kind of past um, some of the more common mistakes. The big uh, things here the students make a mistake on is they plug in the wrong, they plug in, incorrectly, okay, because they can confuse with the negative numbers, and then they also make a mistake with the b squared minus 4ac, okay, this part right here, all right? Now, let's continue to uh, move on here. Now, I'm going to kind of work sideways. This is equivalent to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 60, and that's 64 all over 2. And we're, this problem is going to be finished up here pretty quickly. Let me scoot this down. All right. Now, kind of put it here. All right. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. Okay. It's technically plus or minus 8. And that's why you have the plus or minus here. Okay. So 2, the square root of 64 is 8, plus or, or minus 8 all over 2. Think about it. 64 is 8, positive 8 times a positive 8 is 64. However, negative 8 times negative 8 is also a positive 64. So your answer is both plus or minus. So the square root of 64 is both a 
positive and negative 8. Now, being at the square root of any real number, positive real number is going to be plus or minus. It's already built into the formula. That's why you have that plus or minus there. Okay? So let me go and erase that. I just wanted to point that out to you. Remember, when you're doing math, like let's say the quadratic formula, if you really understand how to do one problem, then you should be okay doing multiple problems. So I'm really pointing out things here nice and slow so you can really kind of master this. And, of course, we want to try to do this in 10 minutes, and I'm sure I'm probably a little bit over that right now, but who cares? By the time you get done watching this video, you'll, you'll be a quadratic equations uh, formula expert. <laughs> All right, let's finish this thing up. So we got 2 plus or minus 8 over 2. So what do we do at this point? Well, this plus or minus here is... Critical. This is this is how we're going to get our two solutions. Remember, let me kind of go up here real quick. When I talked about the theory of polynomials, x squared. There, this there's two solutions. You always get two answers with the quadratic formula. Always, always, always. If you, you don't, you're doing something wrong. Now, this plus or minus is how you're gonna you're gonna get it. Okay. So what this means, and we want to break it out this way, is the following. We want to write this as 2 plus 8. We'll do the plus here, 2 plus 8 over 2, and then we'll do the 2 minus 8 here, okay, over 2. So we have a plus 8 and a minus 8. We don't, we're not going to write it all out. Typically, we'll just write this as plus or minus 8. But at the end of this problem, you have to write out, you actually have to do each calculation separately, okay? And this is how you're going to get your your two answers. So, so you have uh, 2 plus 8 is 10, obviously, divided by 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5, okay? So that is one solution, all right? And then over here, I have 2 uh, minus 8 is negative 6 divided by 2, and negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, and that's my second solution, okay? Sometimes you'll see this written as x1, being 5 and x2 being negative 3. Okay, so you can even write this out this way. x1 and x2. All right, so that's the notation sometimes varies a little bit, but here's the bottom line. You have two solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, so hopefully you understood this. Let's quickly, quickly go back up here and review again. All right, just really uh, uh, fast. So here is a polynomial equation. It's quadratic because the highest power is 2. It also means that you'll always have two solutions. Once you you have this guy written in standard form, highest to lowest power, we can assign um, values to the variables a, b, and c. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, obviously, you need to have the quadratic formula handy. I wouldn't suggest you memorize it right off the bat when you're learning this, but you should commit this to memory. The first th place that you really have to concentrate is plugging in correctly. Use parentheses. Okay, so we actually will uh, I'll put parentheses here, but you have to plug in using parentheses and then you double check that you plugged in everything in correctly before you continue on. So if you, before you do all this other work, make sure you plugged in correctly. Okay. As you kind of start simplifying and you do it by step by step, watch the b squared minus 4ac part. Big, big um, place where students mess up. And then just kind of work through your calculations and then be mindful that the plus or minus part is where you're going to get your two separate solutions. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, you know, of course, there's, there's much more complicated problems with the quadratic uh, formula. It's a big topic in mathematics and algebra. You know, you can be using, de and you could, by the way, you can use a quadratic formula with fractions uh, and decimals, and then there's uh, positive and negative roots, and then imaginary roots. Probably some of you out there are like, well, what happens? You know, this is a much deeper topic. The whole, the whole point of this video was just to get you to apply the quadratic formula, okay? Now, the theory of polynomials, that's more expansive. And um, hopefully you'll subscribe because I have a lot of stuff on my channel about that, about the quadratic equations, polynomials, etc. And if uh, you know this video helped you out, maybe you want to consider giving it a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. I try to read uh, as many comments as possible so I can figure out what kind of videos that you uh, could best serve the community out there. But anyways, um, appreciate your time and I wish you all the best. Take care.